It's been a while since Nigeria wielded substantial influence at FIFA, the world football governing body. Despite that, many Nigerians can still recollect with nostalgia the time spent in Geneva by the late Oyo Orok Oyo on the FIFA Council, the highest decision-making body of the organization. After him came Dr. Amos Adamo, whose stewardship got off to a flying start before terminating on a not-too-pleasant note. However, barring unforeseen circumstances, the country may yet be on the cusp of yet something great at FIFA. We're now being joined here in Lagos by Amadru Pinnick, President, Nigeria Football Federation, a man who may be set to bring back those good memories as he launches a bid to win a seat on the FIFA Council. We expect him to tell us how this ambition can improve the game in Nigeria, the problems and prospects of Nigerian football as they affect financial discipline in the football house, development of new talent, welfare and remuneration of players and coaches of the various national teams, and football's seemingly unending romance with government. Welcome to the program. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you very much for having me. It's always a pleasure being here. Good morning. Well, thank you for joining us too. But first, let's start with this. Uh, to many Nigerians who do not understand what role the FIFA Executive Council plays, uh, can you explain the importance of that uh, yeah, you know, the, council and what the country <clears throat> stands to benefit uh, from you joining the FIFA Executive Council? Yeah, the FIFA Council, um, it used to be called the FIFA Executive Committee. Then when Gianni Fantino came in, it was rebranded and um, uh, called now the FIFA Council. It's made up of 37 members, including the FIFA president. It's the highest decision-making body of football globally. And um, Africa has um, seven representation. It's um, definitely is something huge. It's something that um, the last time Nigeria was in this council was about um, 11 years ago, uh, Dr. Emos Adamu. And um, we believe that uh, with Nigeria being there, one of the benefits to Nigeria is basically global recognition. That I can say to you. But it's not Nigerians electing me to be president. It's Africa. So my first... I'm going to be as honest as possible. My first um, point of duty is to FIFA, to the global football, how to build global football to a higher level, how to uh, look at the dreams of the leadership of FIFA, especially Gianni Infantino, and see how we can help. Of course, the second is to the Confederation of African Unity, uh, African Football, CAF, because um, I'll be elected into the council by my colleagues in CAF, by God's grace. So everything that we want to present will be, you know, we are coming out with a very strong representation. And by God's grace, if our team, we have a team, if our team are able to make it into this council, the Africa will be having the strongest representation in the FIFA Council. You know, for example, Fauzi um, from Morocco, Ani Aborida from Egypt, uh, Mama Tutori from Mali, um, Mutarin Dakachus from Benin Republic, Aisha Johansen from Sierra Leone, and indeed um, um, Patrice Mosepe from uh, South Africa, who we pray we lead CAF in the next um, uh, dispensation. You see, why we need a very strong representation, there are going to be very critical decisions that are going to be taken in, in the next um, uh, uh, few years in, full, in FIFA. For example, the 2030 World Cup. Why can't it come to Africa? Why can't it come as an African beat? It's not just maybe a Morocco beat or a Nigerian beat, an African beat. You know, because if you look at the next World Cup after Qatar, it's Mexico, Canada, and, um, and, and the US. So why do we come with an African beat? Starting from Ethiopia, it's just my own calculation. Kigali, two stadia, Abuja, Lagos, um, talking about Cameroon, Ghana, Cote d'Ivoire, Senegal, all the way to Senegal, um, Guinea, and all the way to um, and Morocco, and even Egypt, call it a United African bid, like what they do in UEFA. It's my own, this is my own thought, you know. So I believe that is a very critical decision, and you need very strong representation to pass that. You know, because, for example, like I said, look at the names I've mentioned. Who can you bully among us? You cannot. You cannot bully me as a Nigerian, for the, the reason that it's a very footballing Nigeria is a proud footballing country. You cannot tell me you are more successful than me in football. 
It's not possible because if you say you won the Brazil can say you've won the World Cup, I'll tell you we won the, the under 17 five times. We've won our continental championship three times. We've won the female nine times. We've won the Olympics gold. We can go on and on. So we are just going to appeal to other people running against us. For example, that at the moment we present a very strong uh, um, uh, and very vocal you know, um, representation for the continent. So, but everybody running against me, for example, uh, the president of Tanzania football, president of Kenya football, president of the Gambia, Lamin, who is my close brother, the president of Zambia, Andrew, just won the re-election, an amazing guy. Then the incumbent, of course, there's sentiment with the incumbent, Walter Yamilandu, who is also a very close friend. But what we need right now is a very, very strong representation. In football, there's no big country because on the field of play, you have 11. Off the field, you have seven. In the FIFA Congress, Tos and Caucasus is a country with only 35,000 people. They have one vote. China, with over a billion people, have one vote. So that's what football, that's how it plays out. So what you need to do is just to appeal to their conscience. All of us are eminently qualified to run, but right now, we can give you a better representation. And Amadou Pinik, the twin advantage that I have is that I'm from a big country, yes. I'm also from a very tiny ethnic group. So the sentiment of the small countries, I know it. The sentiment of a big country, I also know it. So we can give you the kind of representation that nobody will give to you. And that's the sentiment I'm appealing to other of my colleagues, Nick in Kenya and all those. Right now, we need to be very, very vocal in FIFA Council. We don't want to be going there being passive. We don't want to be going there being peripheral. We want to go there being active. We want to represent the continent. And to Nigeria, inadvertently, if anything comes, and my opinion is asked about setting, then definitely I'll look at Nigeria, I'll look at Ghana, look at Niger. So people should understand that it's not Nigerians that are voting me in. We are going to represent a continent. Okay. We are going to represent a, 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 the continent of Africa. And so that is our main concern. But trust me, the beauty that this will bring to Nigeria is incomprehensible, it is, is unprecedented. And you cannot, it's not comprehensible. And that's the truth. Fantastic. Well, the job of the FIFA Council is to set a vision for global football, and you're clearly well on your way, so we're keeping our fingers crossed for you. But what has the federal government done to support you? I mean, we saw the huge backing that Dr. Ngozi Okonjo Iweala recently got for her, with her bid for the WTO, and it was successful. So are you enjoying that same kind of backing? I'm enjoying unprecedented support of the federal government. So kudos to the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria. Unprecedented. Even I was surprised when some ministers would call me and say, oh, your minister just got in touch with us. Your minister just got in touch with us. So the Honorable Minister has been amazing. You know, true to his name, he's a game and a narrative changer. So I really want to thank him. I want to thank the federal government. I also want to thank the Office of the Chief of Staff. They've been amazing because they believe that Nigeria uh, football is a major tonic in this country. And for us to keep that tonic up, we need a Nigerian in the FIFA Executive, in the FIFA Council. Because just the name, you know, you put Amadou Pinik in the name tag, you see Nigeria, is a lot. It says a lot, you know. So I just want to thank the, not just them, a lot of Nigerians, you know. They've called, offering support one okay. way or the other. I've, listen, I've gone to over 30 countries. I was in the lab this morning to do my COVID test because I'm traveling today. I'm going to cover North African countries before going to Morocco. And the, 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 the lab attendant said, look at your record. I've not seen any Nigeria that have done the COVID test more than you. And I just laughed. I said, that's the one you know. There was a day I left Nigeria, went to, to uh, Cotonou. As I got to Cotonou, I did the COVID test, left Cotonou, landed in uh, 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 Togo, Lome. I did the COVID test, left Lome, slept in Burkina okay. Faso that night. Okay. We also did the COVID test. So okay. it's been very tough, but okay. by God's grace, I think we shall overcome. I mean, and, and the fact that you're not just flying Nigeria's flag, they're flying the flag of Delta State. And Usi College, you know, in Worry, that's another, you know, very preferred flag you're flying. And, and you don't know the inspiration you're giving to a lot of uh, young people. Let, let's talk about, you know, Patrick Mosepe. He's bringing a lot. He wants to be next CAF president. Uh, Patrick is quite very dynamic. Billardier made a lot of money from the mines. Uh, his in-laws with Siri Ravaposa, in-laws with Jeff Radebe. What else do you think Patrick can bring to CAF? Integrity, because that is all we need in CAF. Because if you look at CAF, what is going on now, we, we have a lot of issues surrounding the integrity of the incumbent and the leadership of CAF. And you see, a minus to integrity is that you don't have anybody attracted to you. 
you don't have any the corporates attracted because football is business. So Patrice Musepe coming into, I was going to run for the presidency of CAF. I'm sure it would have been a lot easier, you know, because most of my colleagues, they decided to even run for the council, believing that I was going to run for the FAR presidency. But like I said the, the other time, when I saw somebody that has very superior quality, somebody I know I cannot stand shoulder to shoulder with in all honesty and humility, so what do I need to do is to koto, take a back seat and support him. This, the guy, football is, according to what Gianni said when he came to Nigeria, he said football is life, it's beyond religion. So if football is life, it means you need a game changer to navigate football to the promised land. And that is the truth. So you have Patrick Musipi as a game changer. It's not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's, not, it's not new to football. He owns exclusively Mamalodi Sundance, one of the most successful clubs coming out of Africa. This is a club that pays up to fifteen, twenty thousand dollars $20,000 a month. This is a club that pays even more than that. One of the best goalkeepers from the continent of Africa, young from the, the goalkeeper of Uganda, is also the keeper of Mamalodi Sundance. And Mamalodi Sundance parades Africans not just from South Africa, but all parts of Africa. And look at Patrice Musepe. He has business enterprise in 40 African countries, enabling our African brothers, sisters, and youth. So to me, it's a no-brainer for you to say you don't want to support him. Because if himself, just imagine, I give an example. Patrice Musepe, you read the first magazine that is a billionaire. There are 12 billionaires in the continent. The first thing you can call all the billionaires, please, we need to revive African football. Please, I expect each of you to contribute X, Y, Z for a start. Personally, I cannot do that. But he can do it. That is the beauty of Patrice Musepe. Apart from that, you look at all those other companies like Alibaba, you know, the Bill Gates and all those stuff. All their companies, somehow, there are some of the things that they use that enables them from the continent of Africa. So bring back to Africa. He can do that easily. I cannot do it easily. So I talked to him. You saw me talking to him walking into the studio. We talked 24 hours. We talked every minute because we had planning strategy even beyond being elected. So he is very determined, and he wants to change the face of football in the continent. He is truly and really desirous. My prayer has been he should not be discouraged because when you are going to politics, there is also the good, bad, and ugly. And the ugly can be very dirty that you might decide to pull out. But thank God, Gianni has always been preaching the unity of Africa. And to me, I stand to be corrected. Gianni remains, to me, the apostle of what's called the Black Lives Matter. Because when nobody thought about that phrase, he appointed an African, a black African from the Saharan Africa, who was even working in Nigeria as the general secretary of FIFA against all odds. So to me, he loves this continent beyond our dream. And what he's even advocating is to build what class they are one each in all the, all, 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 in all the 44, uh, 54 member associations that will cost between 15 to 20 million dollars. That was the proposal last year. So I believe that will come to bear. Today, I'm proud to say that we have two FIFA projects in Nigeria. One in Kedi State, that one is even nearing completion, and the other one in Uborodo in what you would call Escravos. I don't like calling it Escravos. Escravos is a colonial coinage for slaves. So, Uborodo is a real name, come on, Shakiri man, so I will say that any day, any time. So, uh, one is coming up there, which will be commissioned. So, I'm even talking to Gianni that the next time he visits Nigeria, he will be commissioning those projects, middle of the, middle of the year, flying straight from Zurich to, to, to Uborodo. There's an airport, a two-kilometer airport there. From there, straight to Kebi, commissions the airport in Kebi, they maybe go to Abuja and see the president. They're yeah, from their flyback, you know. And I believe Gianni will do it. He loves this country. He loves this continent. Well, <laughs> and that's why I am always an apostle of well, Gianni Infantino. Amadio Pene, great comment there on Gianni Infantino and Mosepe. Uh, but let's take a short commercial break. When we return, the conversation will continue. Stay with us. Welcome back to The Morning Show here on the Arise News Channel. Our guest is still Amaju Penek, president of the Nigerian Football Federation. Well, before we went on break, uh, you were talking about Musepe, the South African, and also the FIFA president. Now, uh, Ongiani Infantino, who seems to be so much interested in uh, African uh, football politics, uh, do you think that there is uh, any particular reason uh, why he's showing that special interest in 
the politics of football no. in Africa. When Gianni showed interest four years ago in bringing in Fatma Samora, there was nothing. Gianni loves Africa. I did not vote for Gianni. If I tell you my history with Gianni, you marvel. Four years ago, um, eight, six years ago, when Gianni came, he wanted to run. I told him that you, can't, you guys cannot have it all the time. I was very rude, with all due respect to him. And he, I said, no, we are going to vote for Salman from Bahrain. I said, Kaf is voting for Salman. But he said, please, my brother, you see, we are age mates, we should work together. I said, no, I'm following Kaf. He said, Nigeria. no. I was very rude. But guess what? When he won his election, we met in Mexico. I was hiding. He called me. He said, Panic. Nigeria is too big a country to be ignored. Can I see you, please? And we went up to his penthouse. We sat down. We had a long discussion. And he said, no, I want to work with Africa, and I want to work with you. We spoke very, he was quite eloquent. He was quite serious. He was quite sincere. At that point, I just gave myself to him. And I told him, you must visit Nigeria. And lo and behold, two months thereafter, he visited Nigeria. So this man loves Nigeria. He doesn't have anything. He loves this continent, and he believes this continent cannot be a fluke. Because the moment the continent is seen as a fluke, let me tell you why. In the last two uh, Premier League campaigns, we had three Africans winning one, two, three positions. Salah, Mane, and Obama Young. And where did these players come from? You, don't, you can't write their history, but if you look at Messi, look at Maradona, you could see when they were two, three, four, five years old, but these players just came from nowhere. Just imagine if we had the enabling environment as encapsulated in building proper structures, proper academies, proper facilities. You will see the, the, the metallic rise of all these kids. So he believes Africa can have an abundance of talent. Let me give you an example. When I went to pick Gianni from the airport, when we're going back, going to, uh, from the Abuja airport, going into Hilton, I didn't know he was counting. On a Sunday, when we got to Hilton, he said, Pinnick, I counted three, I counted about six playing pitches on both sides, people playing football on a Sunday. He said, you guys must really love the game. So that's what I said. So he lost, he doesn't have anything to hide. And coming to it, that's why Africa loves him, because they believe Look at the development office just opened in Kigali. I was there mm -hmm. two weeks ago. There's one in, in Senegal. There's one in South Africa. He's putting a lot in the continent because he believes the continent can that's, be the best. That's great. He believes the continent can also produce a World Cup. That's uh, great, champion. Mr. Penick. Can we move on now? We're going to sharply segue into you and your term so far as the president of the NFF. One of your aims was to be 100% self-sustainable? How far have you gone to divest the NFF of government subventions and other grants from the government? Yeah, um, at the moment, we are still between 60 to 70 percent, as captured in our last um, audited report, which was published in most newspapers, um, the Daily Trust, it was in Vanguard, and a couple of other papers. It's even in the FIFA website, our audited report. It's clear that we are heading, last year, the COVID uh, pandemic affected a lot that we did. And um, this year we are, we are coming back. I think some of our sponsors are coming back and we have some new sponsors. So we are looking at within the next, the next two years, by, before the end of my tenure, we would have gotten to that promised land of 100% self-sustaining. And of course, with the coming of Musepe, one of his goals is to make sure every ME, that is every member nation, achieve 100% self-sustaining, you know, in terms of funding. And that's what we are looking at. So is okay. and Nigerians trust me, Nigerians are really, really excited about football, but we want to just look at having the right people. I give you an example with this my campaign. For example, Anotedola called me, Femi called me, Zamaju, I know you are traveling XYZ. Let me pay an handler for you. He paid an handler for me that took me around, you know, flying from one country to the other. So it's not just look. Mm. Even my former governor, James Ibori, he had to get my Kadunoga. You know, so I've been traveling. A lot of people have come out to say they are truly, really supporting what I'm doing. The governor of Delta State, the governor of Edo State, even the governor of Plateau State, they've called. What can we do? So Nigerians are excited about football. Okay. Give or take. So I okay. can tell you, and I can go on and on okay. with all this, you know. Three quick burning issues, Mr. Finnick. Number one, salary payments, you know, for people, coaches, and the likes. A lot of them are owed a lot of salary. Number two will be the state of the Nigerian league. Consistently, we've heard a lot of stories that are not good about the league, kidnapping of driver and bosses and things like that. And number three will be this brouhaha about Super Egos going to Benin Republic through a boat. The players say they are not, they're not in support of Some of the players say they don't like it. 
Just clear terms on those three issues quickly. Let me say that it is not, um, we are not saying that um, going by boat, uh, let me take it from the rear, you know. Um, going to Kotonu by boat, I do that all the time. When we're going to his bed, we did it. There's nothing wrong in going, exploring other form of adventure in Nigeria. You know, we all, there's nobody in Lagos that have not been to Elashe or been to Katakwa Bay. So it's the same thing. So what's the process of going to, what's the big deal? Look at the Lagos terminal, the, uh, the, the boat terminal. It's one of the best in the world that I've seen. You know, so why do we use all those things if we have them? So it's just a projection. It's not mean that we have agreed on it, you know, to say we are looking at going by road to Kotonu, which is next door neighbor, because even if you want to leave a co-hotel to the airport, leaving the co-hotel to uh, National, uh, to Mohitala International Airport is half the journey of going to Kotonu. So why do you need to fly and go to Kotonu? So it's, it's just one of those things, you know. So we don't believe that. Uh, we might not go by road if, it's, if our security report, we have the intelligence, I was also working with the Lagos State Government from here and have a meeting with the Lagos State Governor. All those are the things I want to explore and see the best, what is best suited for that. So, and once we say we are going by the creeks to Kotonu, of course, we provide every requisite, you know, um, um, we provide the enabling environment for them to go in terms of security, in terms of everything. But people should look at Nigeria beyond that. The narrative is not as if there's no country in this world that do not have black spots. But the truth is, we're all living, and we, all, we, we, we live, and we try to live. Living is daring. Living is an adventure. And if it's your time, it's your time. We fly every minute. We go every hour. But Nigerians should understand that we are passing through a phase. This phase, we, 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 we go off Sunday. So, and that's it. Then for the league, I don't think we are doing badly. I don't think we are doing badly. The league, you can watch the league from your TV. You can watch the league, the league from your phone, sorry. And that's the first step. And now, if you look at all the venues they are playing, the, the total is 100% uh, in line with uh, uh, cough licensing uh, uh, compliance, you know, and the minister made sure that we got that right first, because, it can be, because there's, no, there's no leak. You cannot fund leak without TV. You cannot, without the TV rights. The TV rights are the, between 60, 70, 80% of what comes. So you must create that environment for people to see beautiful picture, lush green pitches, Beautiful environment, security, and that's it. Security outside the stadium, we cannot help it. We don't want to say, for example, if a club is going from Wari to Lagos, we can only provide security within the stadium and see what we can do, you know. But it happens. We are not, nobody's happy about the security situation. But I believe, and you know, like I know, that the government is making every effort in ensuring that these security challenges are reduced to the barest minimum. That I can tell you for free. That I know. But security issues are not what you publicly say. They are intelligence gathering. There are a lot of things that you do. And we also work with them. So to me, and, and on our part, the NFL, we also set up our own COVID special committee. I just gave an approval yesterday so that they can meet some of their demands. So it's not just them. So we are doing the bit that we can in supporting okay. what okay. the federal government is doing. Okay, real quickly, the issue of salaries, 22 months salary not no, no, paid. No, 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 salary no. Nobody, can, nobody can tell you that we're in them for 22 months. Okay. Nobody can do that. No coach, any coach can, can come and say that. Nobody. It's not possible. What we try to do <coughs> is our salary is tied to a particular sponsorship. And that particular company is having some kind of challenges, but at that, they are still also bringing some part of what they are doing. And that's, there's no company in Nigeria that do not have challenge at the moment well, because I'm of the COVID you, cases. Amadou, uh, we're running out of time. But quickly, mm -hmm. I would like to ask you, if you don't make it to the FIFA Council seat, will you run uh, for a third time as uh, NFF president? I don't think so. Okay. I, 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 I don't think so. Thank at you the moment, very much. I, let me just finish my two term and go to my beautiful wife. Okay. Thank you very much indeed.